Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 38 of the Near Death Experience podcast. Um, I know it has been a very long time since I've done anything uh, in terms of the podcast, and uh, just wanted to apologize for that. Um, Life and, you know, the times after, well, still during COVID, really, but the era of people believing that it's over and uh, people sort of figuring things out is now kind of upon us. So uh, I'm going to have a little bit less time at home. Uh, I'm going to be out on site working once a week and there is a lot of other stuff uh, just to sort out including like a possible move Um, my job might change a little so uh, that is part of why there has been sort of a de-emphasis on the podcast Um, a while ago I was uh, released from the um, verbal uh, ambassador program because I hadn't done any of their sort of required content, which is fine. I had been kind of slacking. <clears throat> Christmas came around, New Year's came around, and that is uh, kind of a heavy time. Plus, uh, other like unforeseen things have come up during that time within the uh, extended family and such. So uh, I haven't really felt the desire to uh, come back to this, but uh, I will do my best in the future. So just wanted to let everyone know that. Um, I know, like I said, it has been a long freaking time. Um, Yeah, I think I only streamed like once or twice. Let me even check when the last episode was. Uh, must have been a very long time ago. Okay, no, that's not right. Come on, load. I think it was like... Oh, it's two months. Okay. Yeah. So two months ago, um, a little bit long to wait, obviously, (laughs) between episodes, but this one will go up in audio and video form. So uh, what kicked this off was a lot of the news that has come out about uh, Diablo 2, 3, um, and 4, because there is a new quarterly update out. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, to my understanding, it's about the um, pardon me, it's about the environments again, so we're back to an art update versus a mechanical update. Um, the art from Blizzard is usually like super top notch as along with their cinematics. I always enjoy looking at that, so I'm going to take a fresh look at it. So that will probably make for a much longer episode for now. Um, I think what I'll do is kind of start with Path of Exile and then I'll move up the uh, Diablo sequence from 2 and uh, really get us going into that subject matter. So, um, like I said, I will try to make more uh, consistent podcast episodes. I'll try to find my footing. <clears throat> like I said, there's going to be a move, so follow the uh, Twitter account down there for updates. Um, you can follow my main if you want. It's connected. But uh, also, um, I've set up my YouTube channels to have the same name, so go there as well. Uh, so I lost my custom URL because there's uh, that was an old thing before they set the cap on the number of subscribers and views you need to have in order to get a personal URL. And, you know, I went and gave that up, but whatever. 
the name wasn't relevant to my stream and any of my content, so I felt it was a good idea. Anyway. Um, so Path of Exile. Uh, we are in patch 317. Um, the Atlas has changed quite a lot. Um, basically, we have four new uh, Eldritch entities, if you haven't heard. We basically have uh, two tiers of bosses. We have uh, the sort of mini-bosses along the way, and then the big bosses, which are the Eater of Worlds and Searing Exarch. Pretty decent content. I had beaten them early in the league and uh early ish anyway. And had a good time with it. Um I thought it would be uh I guess more difficult content, I guess you wanna call it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not like the bosses aren't well designed and stuff like that. I was just getting a little bit used to the cheese that is a lot of the Maven fight with a memory game or uh, a lot of the phased fights that we were getting in the past, like Sirius. Um, then one of the other major changes is that the, As uh, the Atlas is now global, so we don't have any regions anymore, and progression is much more sped up, which is amazing. Um, I started off playing Explosive Arrow uh, Ballista Elementalist, which is a mouthful, but then I switched to just a random Poison Sparker build that Mathwell was running. Uh, that was okay. And I had just been doing some speed farming and maps for a long time. Uh, and then I went into a int stacking uh, Wander build, which was based off of the old Atlas and didn't really take into account like, I didn't see a refresh after this atlas came out, so there were a lot of things that I was left kind of fudging with and, you know, turning knobs. Um, I took it in a bit of different direction than the original build creator, and I went a much more expensive route <laughs> for in stacking. Uh, I think I got up to 2100 intelligence and like 12,000 ES or something. Um, yeah, so uh, if you haven't checked that out, go to pathofxl.com. Uh, all the information is there. The league mechanic that we got is Arch Nemesis. Um, I found myself not really interacting with it very much. I thought it was interesting at first, but then it just sort of, because there was a big atlas change, uh, that sort of took a, a front seat. And then the Arch Nemesis was just like this afterthought, like, okay, well, now I have all these recipes I could find, but they don't really build up to a whole lot, I guess. <laughs> um, the achievements were around getting uh, all the recipes and fighting them individually, but that was kind of it, right? Uh, so the League Mechanic was you know, kept simple due to the fact that we had such a huge Atlas change, and I think that also the Atlas passive tree that we got which was phenomenal, is definitely going to get an extra look. Um, I would think they may also revisit some past League mechanics since you can choose which content you're engaging with now. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of direction they take that in. Um, I know some League mechanics were kind of underrepresented in the tree. So, uh, I mean, let me know your thoughts on what you'd like to see the tree turn into if there's any uh league that you ex experienced in the past that you think you know um might be worth trying out uh this league was a very bow centric league with um explosive arrow being uh like the best uh like starter build that you could really use honestly it was higher damage than my int stacker which is weird but um it's it's a fun build uh, especially if you're used to playing like totems or minions if you're not it's a little bit of an adjustment in play style since you don't since you're not doing the damage it's the totems that you put but with six of them attacking fast enough it does really uh pack quite a punch so 
Um, at this point in the league, uh, we are at the stage where the gauntlet is on. Uh, I tried to play, but, you know, um, because I play a lot of softcore and because I've kind of lost the awareness that you need to keep a hardcore character alive, I've been dying, like, a lot. Um, I actually just got to the end of Act 2 before I was not paying attention and some, like, caustic arrow things were going off around me and killed my level 26 champion just after I got the buff for helping Oak because his regen with the gauntlet mods was not letting me do very much, you know, consistent damage. I think I would have needed, like, uh, quite a few flask recharges. And just a lot of time, uh, which probably would have done it. But um, yeah, there was uh, a lot happening. And, you know, maybe future gauntlets, I'll try again and be a little more methodical about it. But, you know, the fact that it's straight double damage and, you know, all of those attack cast and everything modifiers along with double health on unique mobs it just made for this crazy kind of like extra long experience and it really like forced you to do uh something meta that did a lot of damage in order to com combat that but the early game is a slog and it just gets more difficult after that right uh, i think this is the first time i've seen so many people drop out and quit honestly <laughs> um uh, to be perfectly honest, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I understand wanting to take part in it. And, you know, Ziz is a, a trooper for keeping it on like this. It's great what he does for the game. But that particular event, I don't think I'll really be placing too much emphasis on it, especially in the future. Um, might do some private league stuff, but uh, the gauntlet was never a thing that I would have competed on. Uh, very strongly anyway just because the uh, base game and my style in Path of Exile has always been a bit too like fast and in your face uh, in the past um, I don't think I'll repeat the wander that I did this league either uh, I'll just keep an eye out for something else um, I do play a lot of different things this was the first time I went an assassin I think first time I went really hard into shadow. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it for Path of Exile. There's a lot of subjects that uh, we could go into, but I don't think right now are very worth it. Um, if you want to share your thoughts about the current league, uh, definitely do so in the comments. Um, talk about what you know you think the Atlas Tree could turn into. What you think about the Void Stones? um how you liked having a global t16 map and uh you know i wonder if the speed map meta will change right <laughs> uh because currently you can get a lot of like chance to duplicate um maps if you were a person that really needed extra i think i have like three or four hundred t16s in my stash So, um, like I said, uh, we're into the Diablos now, so we're going to go two, three, four. Um, two and three aren't going to be uh, very long updates. Um, as a preface, I may play Diablo 2 ladder, but uh, currently the Diablo franchise is in a weird spot for me. Um, because I played so many hours of D3, I feel kind of, you know, burnt out with that game. Um, I'm not in a kind of mental spot to have a, a long run at it again. I put like over 6,000 hours into it. And there were so many uh, gripes that I had over time that I just felt like 
nothing was going to really change in a meaningful way that would, you know, bring me back because overall the game is about the same thing. The speed has gotten speedier and, you know, obviously the game is what it is. So they're not really doing anything to dial that back. Um, I mean, we all know that was a uh, choice made a long time ago to just provide buffs. Um, if you haven't played it, if you're on the outside looking in, give it a shot. But uh, we'll get to some of the specifics as to, you know, uh, why I have sort of this opinion on uh, D3. Um, but anyway, with D2, uh, the latter season was finally announced. Um, as we had heard uh, quite some time ago, they were having some issues with the uh, game creation system. The legacy game creation method was, there was a problem with the current architecture, I believe it was. Uh, don't quote me on that, but overall, I believe the issue was that because games were getting created so fast, it started causing problems on the back end. So they had to re architecture um, their server solution and put in a new method of handling those quick game creations uh, to help combat server load. Um, there is a post about it. If you can find it, I would suggest reading it. It's a bit technical, but they do explain it. And that was really the holdup for patch 2.4 which is going to actually add some content to Diablo 2. Um, they are bringing in some unused rune words that were in the files, but just off. And uh, you know what? I think it'll be fun. Um, when I did play it, I found there was that problem with transposing the original animations to the new. So there was some... Uh, awkwardness when you changed from legacy mode to the current HD. So, you know, if you're trying to cast something that, say, took a half second, if all you're doing is taking the time value on the 24 FPS version, that's 12 frames. But a half second at 60 FPS is more than double the length, right? So now you're dealing with a 30 FPS animation and on raw time. It looks very awkward without uh, a lot of the higher cast breakpoints being followed. Um, yes, a lot of the animations are smoother, but the added time uh, really starts to add up on you um, when you're playing in the like new graphics. I'm not sure whether they've done anything to kind of like you know look into that. I guess I know people are speedrunning. Uh, the new version, and there's a way to get the uh, auto splitter running as well. Um, maybe I'll get back into that. I'm not 100% sure. A lot of my problem before was the 800 by 600, and uh, a lot of my mouse gestures, because I play on a 4K screen, were very wide. So I do things like click out or um, just have problems with the tiny, teeny tiny box on my screen. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point is uh, take you over to my monitor. Um, and this is the DT Resurrected 2.4 and letter update, which was done on March 24th. Um, obviously, this is a bit of time ago. So uh, again, apologies for the lateness, but I went into why that was a thing. Um, I'm not going to explain the specifics of it, so, uh, yeah. So here's Pez Radar and his, uh, statement about D2R and patch 2.4. So, um, this is going to go into things I already mentioned. So, uh, we wanted to provide an update to the Diablo community regarding the latest on 2.4 balance changes. On the latest 2.4 balance patch changes and our very first ladder season. First, we wanted to thank everyone for your feedback and testing over the last several weeks as we honed in on various database, server, and balance changes that will be arriving in this update for D2R. 
Uh, originally, we planned to go by the end of this month, but unfortunately, you ran into some snags. I know your first reaction may be, here we go again, which, every, <laughs> which everyone has a right to say, getting this update perfected for ladder has been quite a journey. Uh, but we did want to explain some of the circumstances that led to the this adjustment in dates and at the same time provide you with updates on the new expected release of 2.4 and the start of the ladder to ensure players have enough time to plan for the race that occurs with the start of each ladder. That's 2.99 for each class. And like first overall. So now we're going to get into some specifics. So what happened here? Um, as you may recall, and this is the original post I was talking about, uh, we have been working through extensive updates on the backend and database services for the game. Over the last few months, the team has been implementing these updates to uh, the server and database using learnings from PTR from the immense help the community provided during these testing phases. Last week, we had some extended downtime for D2R, which was to implement the final batch of changes from our PTR to our production environments. During this update, we unfortunately ran into quite a few showstoppers that did not appear in PTR but were present in production environments. So I think this is uh, one of the things that would generally have been one of the, I guess, failings or lessons learned from a lot of the games and uh, deployments they did before. So they would see something on the PTR, uh, get it into prod, and then um, issues would happen all the time. And, you know, it's kind of a meme now that Blizzard doesn't really have a <laughs> smooth launch pattern. But this is, this is a very key thing. If you find something that was not present in your um, test environment because the code is so different usually from your testing then there's a lot to look out for because now you need to have basically two scenarios. So due to that, this is where they really stopped themselves and said, hey, we need to get this right. Thank you. Due to that, we extended the maintenance as we needed to roll back changes so we didn't affect users and could get the game back up and running. So what were these showstoppers? We experienced an issue where a good swath of sh uh, stashes did not convert correctly. The database, unfortunately, did not migrate to the new format and was not seen in the PTR until we moved it to production. This is due to PTR testing being brand new to the game. Yes. There was a missing index in the database, which was causing things to go much slower in production. This was not noticeable on PTR. This led to slow joining of, of games. This isn't a big deal. Um... You can just add that, but the testing I get. And then lastly, because PTR was just one single regional database, we experienced a few additional database issues on production as that has multiple regions and thus didn't surface some of the errors we were seeing. Thankfully, this, is, this will be addressed in future PTRs since there will be multiple regional databases going forward. Uh, so they go on to say that uh, the team's been able to identify and address all these issues, doing another maintenance. With that maintenance, we should be good to go for getting 2.4 out to users. 2.4 is currently planned for April 14th release. So that is about nine days from now. And then the latter will be two weeks later on April 28th. Uh, so that is a Friday. So that we're looking at Friday the 14th. And oh, sorry, Thursday the 14th and Thursday the 28th. Um, not really sure why Thursdays, um, but okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a squeeze for some people um, to really get something like that in, uh, given that, you know, it's just before the weekend. A lot of times games come out on Friday, but. That's okay. Um, hoping everything goes fine. Uh, like I said, I would suggest reading this old post as well. Um, this is no longer really relevant, but it'll just give you some context as to uh, what really helps take so long. Um, moving into Diablo 3, 
uh, and I'll include these links on YouTube. Um, I'll make sure to take everything down. So moving to Diablo 3, we have uh, Season 26, Fall of the Nephilim. Uh, season 26 will land on April 15th at 5 p.m. Well, there you go. That's your reason. 14th is D2R and 15th is D3. Um, we have the seasonal theme. Uh, the souls of heroes defeated in eternal struggle against evil call for aid. Astute Nephilim will listen to the uh, petrified screams of the dead and find themselves attuned to the last agonizing moments they de of the departed. Uh, echoing Nightmare. First seasonal theme introduces a new activity to the game. Experience an intense, densely packed, increasingly challenged event. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. So this is like Trials, but like... You know. On steroids, I guess. This is, seems like just a reuse of... Uh, What was it? Yeah, the Greater Rift Trials. That's what it was. Um, seasonal Conquests. Uh, I hope they've taken out the whole set dungeon thing because that was a huge pain in the ass before too. Uh, we have the Hadrix gifts. So the key thing I wanted to kind of hone in on is the greater rift update. Um, players can speak to Auric to close an active greater rift. This option is only available in a single player game. Halfway there, <laughs> really, really halfway. Um, it's a little bit, uh, awkward. Um, yeah, it's a little bit awkward in the sense that we've been asking for such a feature for so long, um, that finally after like, you know, the completion of 25 seasons, which has been what, you know, Reaper of Souls came out, I think it was eight years ago, they said. Uh, D3 has been out for 10, so eight solid years of feature progression. I, this, this is part of what I mean, right? Um, I get the team is limited. I get the team moves a little slower. Priorities have changed. But, like... Why? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, three maps have been added and two maps have been removed from the Greater Rift pool. Okay. Um, it seems like only now they've done this. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've had gripes like this over time, and it's, yes, this is kind of isolated to me, and it's kind of a, a me problem. But, you know, in the global sense of things, um, I think you can kind of see why I had a lot of problems uh, playing the same thing. And, you know, after the completion of 25 seasons, now there's a new activity. I mean, yeah, and or extreme. So you know, RNG again is a key component to the player experience. Um, honestly, I think it's too much. Uh, I don't think that future games should rely on this level of randomness because I think it's more useful. Um, elsewhere, especially to extend gameplay and economy between players, but unfortunately for a lot of people, Diablo 3 is not that game, and you can see like how few people play it these days. Um, my appreciation for the game was pretty much lost when 
the greatest determining factor for power in this game was time and time alone. So I like Path of Exile because time alone doesn't get you everything. It will help you achieve things and, you know, make some currency, but um, there is a lot of player agency into how you can spend that time, how you can be more efficient, how, you know, a little tweak to um, what you play and how you play it can really maximize the time that you spend and you'll get meaningful progression in some way. Uh, like if you found more chaos or, you know, if your goal was to delve a little deeper. Um, making progress that way, I think, is a much more meaningful and impactful way of giving you a replay experience rather than, okay, well, this thing just goes on forever. I mean, it's one thing to do, but this whole, like, power creep, infinite scaling or scaling to a, a cap like greater risks do, I just... I, don't see it. All they're doing is giving a place for the power creep to go. And, you know, it's only a matter of time until builds are doing that no problem. And that has been the, like, number one overriding factor in me not playing. Like, I used to be so obsessed with, like, you know, let me get these cool cosmetics, let me get these portraits, let me, like, you know, do all this stuff, but I'm just so tired. <laughs> um, I'm hoping what Diablo 4 does is, you know, take all of those lessons and just say, like, you know, here's all of the different ways you can achieve progress through time, rather than time being the only factor. I guess is really what I'm getting at, right? Uh, because that's what Path of Exile is. It's like you can learn about crafting, but you don't have to engage with it because trade exists. So if you want to shortcut crafting, you can say, okay, well, I don't want to do that. Let me just get the currency to do that. Okay, well, what ways are there to do that? Okay, well, that doesn't mean I have to gain a level. It just means that, you know, I made progress towards a goal because there were alternate means of getting there. Um, but there is only one real means of getting there in D3, and that's just adventure mode and greater rifting and possibly these new, like, Oryx dream things. Um, on the whole, it looks very samey. Um, you know, adding a new mechanic in this game doesn't really add much because it's not it, because it can't really interact with everything else on the scale that most other games have it so like a good example is something like uh crafting in path of exile a lot of league mechanics interact with crafting in some way by either giving you materials or something but this is just like in PoE, you get a new way to interact with crafting, like with Expedition, you know, with ROG, you go up, you see what's changing, you get a full, nice, you know, tutorial about what prefixes are, what suffixes are, what's changing, what can be raised. There's a lot of information to be had there, but D3 is just this flat, boring crafting experience, right? Um you don't really get a sense of what a prefix and suffix is because they don't really matter. They just split it into more generic primary, secondary, and then there's the legendary power. Um, but I digress. I have spoken so much about that and I could do like such a long rant. Um, yeah, so April 15th at 5 p.m. PT, so that means 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, season 26 will start. Um, Wolf Cryer is doing his usual level with the cause. So if you want to support that, I would suggest uh, seeking him out, uh, registering, and um, getting in touch with that for charity. Um, 
So lastly, but not least, uh, I am going to get to the Diablo 4 update, finally. Finally, lastly, and stuff. Here it is. Um, hold on, let me just pop out chat for a second. Here it is. I have not read it. <laughs> so we're in this together. So, okay. Um, I know this one is art based. I know there's not really uh, anything in terms of the mechanics. So I'm going to clear that out of my head. Um, let's go. Uh, we're currently on the page right now. We have a nice picture of some of the scenery in uh, the art in Diablo 4. Uh, this little bridge going in, like we're in a cave in sort of a mine kind of setting. Um, kind of reminiscent of uh, Act 2 in Diablo 3. The sort of mines and tunnels you can get into. This one has a much darker feel and uh, a staircase leading to a lit area. Um, looks like there's uh, sunlight coming down. So, here we go. Hello and welcome to the first Diablo 4 quarterly update of 2022. We hope you enjoyed the la last quarter's update on systems, itemization, and visual effects. Yes, and I remember that. So the previous ones are available. Uh, if you missed out, I would suggest going to check on them. Um, I'm struck by how much the game has evolved since our first blogs. It's difficult for these updates to showcase all the work our engineers, designers, and artists and QA team and producers have done. How do you show a bug that doesn't uh, happen anymore <laughs> or explain how the planning in a burn down chart resulted in a feature making it to the game instead of getting cut? While well, you can't see those things, you can see how systems like itemization and skill trees have evolved, incorporating your feedback and internal testing along the way. You can see how much closer we're getting to our artistic and thematic targets of dark, low fantasy, gothic horror. And keep in mind the images you see today still represent a work in progress. Many artists need to work together on, to deliver Diablo 4 uh, with the top tier visual quality we can be proud of and the promise of an immersive world you can wander through and enjoy and get lost in. Enjoy getting lost in. There we go. The seamless game you play is a composition of many layers of art and visualization from lighting to environments to props and interactives. All staples of like every Diablo game, honestly. Um, the the uh, props and interactives were a thing I think in D one with the the weapon racks or armor racks and like uh, chests. So that has really been kind of core to the experience and. I think it's a mistake to kind of localize it. You really have to look at the whole franchise. But anyway, today we have artists from many of these layers to talk about their craft and everything that goes on goes into building the world of Sanctuary. Uh, thank you for playing the games we make, and without further ado, artists. So this is from the game director, Joe Shelley. I am going to try my hardest to be positive about this. I apologize for being so freaking salty um about diablo but i really love the franchise and i really want to see it go in a positive direction that really says we listened we heard you and we actually wanted to make like a good grindy difficult you know meaningful progression trade enabled action rpg that would actually get people saying, okay, well, I'm going to skip a Path of Exile League for this. Just a lot of like good features that may, they may not have in PoE2 that, you know, would really like elevate it, right? Um, it's, I say these things because I want big things out of it. And I think the, I think the sort of underlying um, level of hype could be compared to the D2 to D3, but people are just instead of foaming at the mouth for a new Diablo game, they're just sort of like cautiously optimistic, I guess. I think that vibe is 
there, but no one wants to get excited, right? No one wants to get their expectations to a point where they're like, okay, well, this is it. <laughs> um, and I, I really want Blizzard, well, Microsoft now, uh, to really stick to their guns, like commit, commit to making a in-depth, fun, big world, immersive, you know, again, trading has been enormous for me, especially in Path of Exile with uh, all the stuff that I do and how much I interact with the trade API. Um, it's just insane. And, you know, the world needs more of those types of games. Um, they don't necessarily have to be that hard or, you know, that punishing, especially with like private league modifiers, but it just has to be in the middle. Just get somewhere that is not clicker heroes, but is, you know, kind of a, I guess, if D3 and Path of Exile currently had a baby and we're like, oh, wow, all this extra endgame, all these extra activities, um, which apparently Diablo 3 took eight years, well, 12 years to really introduce more of them. Um, I digress. Like I said, staying positive. We're trying here, boys. We're trying. So this is Chris Ryder, the art director for Environments. Um, again, we have some more art, all labeled not final. All says pre-alpha uh, in development content, completely fair. First bit of positivity looks amazing. Can't say enough about um, the quality that goes into all of this. Um, I can't say I didn't expect it. I did. But, you know, a pretty game only goes so far. Um, this is kind of discussing a lot of the themes they've been kind of hammering home uh, through the updates. So... Um, they're talking about a tavern, uh, town set at an arid location feels visibly parched. This, so that's like, you know, this is still kind of feeding off of the whole biome feel that, uh, sanctuary kind of has evolved into. Like there's a desert area, there's a snowy area, there's like a jungle area, right? Um, those tropes are still very present in a lot of this art and a lot of the locations they're just trying to push the feel harder on um the locations um i'm looking forward to actually being in there and what kind of seams and what kind of transitions they have like uh if you're going you know how hard the cutoff is uh if they want to like you know get you into i guess from the arid area into like, how do you walk into the other extreme, like the snow, right? Uh, let me see if there's any extra information I can pull. Uh, uh, okay, Diablo Forest art is built with modern techniques and utilizes physically based lighting. Uh, as we handcraft locations across the Eastern continent, we are mindful of our approach to support combat, navigation, narrative intent, and stylistic direction. To accomplish this, we filter concepts, locations, and final implementation through the dual pillars of old masters and a return to darkness. Using these pillars has been instrumental in keeping us consistent and aligned with the visual tone of Diablo 4. The old masters pillar gives us a lens to filter our art through considering techniques uh, classical painters like considering the techniques classical painters like Rembrandt use with the controlled use of detail, tonal range, and expert use of color palettes. Return to Darkness Pillar is a through line in everything. Okay. So, the only comment I'm going to make here is that um, I know art takes the longest, and it's an important piece to the game, but I think they spend a little too much time pushing uh, art, tone, environments, uh, how things look and feel, rather than really getting into 
uh, the meat and potatoes that'll make it fun, I guess. Um, because technically we've had a couple of, uh, at least more than one for sure. Let me just make sure I have this correct. Um, so this is December 2020. Skill tree. Uh, off the top of my head, I think half of the updates at least have been art. Um, one of them touched on itemization and introduced the skill tree. The other one sort of expanded on that in a sort of, you know, we're still thinking about this. It's kind of stick model tier drawings, but these are, this is much more progressed art. It seems like, like, I don't know what's going on internally, but it feels like those mechanics are really taking a backseat to making us, you know, fall in love with the, uh, art direction and lighting, which again, you know, it's important. It looks wonderful, but like, give us something, man. <laughs> um, like here, here's, a, here's a good barometer. So we have Diablo three, which looks decent. It, it's a eight year old game. Um, things can be made to look great in it, but because the game has become such a, you know, uh time wins kind of thing especially with how the current paragon system works you lose a lot of why that matters right so you don't come back to it and say wow this looks cool you know let me interact with these systems you don't need to give a shit about it right it's like you know if i'm walking through these zones i'm going to say wow that's awesome uh, you could get what happened with, like, Wilson. You know, like, wow, scenery looks great. Effects look cool. Game sucks ass. Uninstall. Refund. Right? Um, they need to take this passion from the art and uh, visual style and give it to the uh, mechanics side of it. Because I still think there are some things that can transpose over that would sort of reignite all of the uh, gripes people have with how these things are created. Um, I trust that Joe Shelley is um, a very smart individual. Um, there are videos about all of the uh, locations. So I'm just playing one. This is uh, Orbe Monastery. Yeah, so basically they're going through a lot of trouble to show you environment, art, tone. But so far we don't have a clear picture of how all that integrates into the greater system. And I think that's what these updates are missing. Because, like... You know, even me reading through this, I want to look through it, but um, as someone who started streaming because of Diablo, especially the third one and um, the type of time and effort I put into it and all the things I learned over time about it, it this still just feels empty to me. Um, I, I want to say that that, like, Oh, yeah, well, here we go. Uh, clever ways to use our talus. That's enough to... Yeah. That's greater rifting. <laughs> like, sure, there's 150, but, you know, if your tiles are big enough, they all kind of look the same. Anyway, if we can expand on uh, a lot of the mechanical stuff, especially if we have kind of a mapping-like feature, uh, or if the dungeons actually cater to that kind of thing, where you put in a, a key and, like they said before, and you just, like, run through it, and it's, you know, an activity where the game doesn't, you know, lets you interact with stuff to do, but it's not your only means of 
progressing because you can do things like upgrade your gear, right? Um, honestly, I think the uh, itemization, I, we need to see more. Um, otherwise, I'm assuming a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm assuming a huge amount here. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to stop ranting. Um, yeah, let me just dig up one of the old updates and look at the systems because like I said, it feels like there's a strong lack of desire to really cover it because they're so tiptoey about it. They want to skirt around it. Um, this is December 21. Minimization and Paragon updates. So when did this come out? December 2021. And it still had visual effects. Um, yeah. I, I still think there's a lot of work to do. Um, for some reason, like I said, everything has to for them map back to a visual and you know as long as you explain it well enough and as long as you explain how that integrates with the current experience i don't think that thread is particularly useful yeah this was a sound design update uh art Character design. Um, yeah, again, you know, beautiful art. Congratulations to the team. I just wish they would uh, really start, you know, getting us deep into it. Because I feel like this closed... Um, mentality without something to test is going to make them assume a lot, especially like they did with D3. They're going to guess at what we want. They're not going to have a clear idea of the player base. So I hope that there is some sort of like beta that, uh, or alpha that gets this into our hands to actually like go beyond the art and see what you know, how wonky the RNG is, you know, how you interact with certain things. Because uh, I, I I can't say I'm sold. I, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I just, there's no transparency in terms of uh, a lot of the inner workings. I just, I, I can't say I would buy this yet. <laughs> Um, if I'm going to buy a new game, I want to know that it's going to take me hundreds to thousands of hours. Um, I want something to sink my teeth into and giving us another art update just feels so fillery and unnecessary because this tone has been pushed so many times. Even when there was a mechanical update, there was still like a visual philosophy thrown in. Um, so here's my feedback, uh, back up on the visuals, um, the next two or three solid updates it's established really go hard on, uh, skill mechanics, crafting, um, what your idea of like a really fleshed out itemization is, because I don't see, I haven't seen a very good stat pool over time. It feels samey, very Diablo 3-ish. Um, I would like to see the sort of reduction in importance of turning legendary and unique items into a crafting material or an essence. Um, I think that really just devalues uh, the item system altogether. I don't think someone can really place value in 
an item that they can use in you know an, an, an unintended slot basically if all you need to do is to recraft your way out of that scenario um because now what you're doing is just installing your own without really knowing it you're installing a meta um and that's its own sense of power creep which once it's in you can't back out right you you have to uh it's it's like you know chris wilson's talk at uh, gdc about really taking care of your items it just seems like in Diablo, they don't really give a shit about them, especially the uniques. Um, they don't have flavor. They don't have uh, that punch because it's just, okay, well, I need this power. I don't need this weapon. I'm not going to build around it. I'm just going to destroy it. And you've literally wasted an art asset creating that unique item because it just has no importance. Some people may actually want to use it and build around it, but, you know, like Can Ice Cube, if the only thrill of finding an item is to then just not use it at all, um, then I think there is a real core problem to the itemization. And I, I want to stress that. I think uh, a big issue with how... Um, at least from what I've seen in WoW that does this too, is this idea that uh, items are disposable. And if you want to have real trade, items can't be that disposable, especially if someone has put energy into creating one with a crafting system. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, you've wasted an art asset that someone is barely going to look at and then say, okay, well... Click, done, <laughs> disenchanted, gone. It's, you know, your useful assets become the crafting ones, not all this, you know, time, effort, and thought. Just total backseat. So that that's my feedback, is um, we know what you're capable of in the art department. Stop flexing that. Clear message, just cut it and really start giving us something to uh, chew on. Yeah, because if... Especially for someone like me trying to run a podcast, the, the closed nature of communication doesn't really suit <laughs> me creating content that really, you know... I mean, obviously it's a little bit selfish, what I'm saying, but... I mean, look at the updates and look how quickly and succinctly it gets covered because it's an art update. You know, we're not artists. We're, we're gamers at the end of the day. And, you know, as much as it looks good, we want it to work well even more. So that, that's my feedback. Although it's a little bit selfish, I will admit, just start giving us systems. Start giving us a progression of the skill tree. Start giving us, a, you know, progression of passives uh really get into what crafting is tell us how it's improved what your ideas are i don't care if it's pre-alpha because you know you've taken the liberty of saying that everything is in development so why not share what what the what's the hold up there's no danger in sharing um pre-alpha ideas because what do you get maybe some disappointment that something didn't make it in but you already have that lesson from taking your time with Diablo 2 especially and having that as a lesson you can bring forward. So, you know, I I want to say more positive things. I'm, I'm really desperate to say more positive things. Um, we're running up on an hour of podcast time. So what I'm going to do here is... Uh, stop and i'll have the audio uploaded um i'm gonna upload to youtube as is so uh i hope we see something more 
Uh, I'm going to include the links all in the YouTube description. Uh, if you haven't followed my stream uh, or go to wherever you find wherever you get your podcasts and follow the near death experience, this has been episode thirty eight, uh, and Death Block one six three seven as usual. See you later.